In the previous video, I showed how to do probabilistic generative modeling, where we parameterize the class conditional distributions with Gaussians. Now in this video, I want to show that we're not limited to working with Gaussians, but can actually use different parameterization, different distributions as well. Um, in fact, this is even necessary when we consider data which is no longer continuous, as we will see next. Now consider, for example, the case where I have to deal with a uh, with, with input factors, which, cons which consist of uh, discrete values. So each of these uh, components within this factor only takes on the values 0, 1, for example. Uh, then there would, uh, like an example of such a factor would be like the factors 0, 1, 1, 0, um, etc. So a factor which contains a bunch of zeros and ones. Um, okay, I'm going to also indicate it with, as follows. So xn is a vector um, in which each component takes on value 0, 1, and this to the power d. So it's a d-dimensional vector of zeros and ones. So really, now my data is no longer continuous, right? And what we want to do, uh, we want to come up with uh, conditional models, right? So that we want to assign probabilities. Like given a class, we want to assign prob probabilities to each possible vector x. Uh, but since now uh, my data points are no longer continuous, um, I have to really assign a probability for each possible vector uh, that I can encounter. So that means I'm going to need a lot of parameters. Now in this case, now suppose I indeed work with these binary uh, vectors um, of dimension d, how many parameters would I need to parameterize all of this? So really I'm going to need 2 to the power d parameters or probability values assigned to each of the possible vectors uh, that I can encounter in this situation. And actually it's going to be 2 to the power d minus 1 uh, because these probabilities are normalized, right? So they have to sum up to 1. So uh, there's one um, final parameter that is uh, sort of given by the rest. Now just to stress again the difference with uh, the continuous setting, let's say I only have um, a factor of length 1, so d is 1, then um, in the continuous case I actually consider all axes on this on the real line and I'm going to assign probabilities uh, via distribution. So with this parametric form which is uh, given by a, a mean and a sigma I'm able to assign a probability to, to each x in my uh, space r. Um, okay so that so in a continuous setting I can work with parametric models for assigning probabilities to each possible x. But now I'm considering the binary case uh, where I'm considering for example only the value 1, a 0 and the value 1. And now I cannot make such a continuous parameterization, I cannot work with Gaussians, so I really have to explicitly assign a probability to each uh, of these possibilities. Now if I have only one variable, so in the case d is 1, then I'm going to assign a probability uh, for well the value 0 and uh, probability for the value 1. Okay, and now if I have a, a vector of such uh, binary variables, uh, then I really need this to the power d number of probabilities in the end to, uh, well, basically to describe my class conditional probabilities. And this means that in this uh, discrete setting, uh, the number of parameters really scales with 2 to the power d uh, minus 1. Okay, so that's in the discrete setting. Okay, and this on the left was the continuous uh, case. And also in this case, of course, the number of parameters scales with the dimension of my data, but it doesn't scale that rapidly as we see in, in uh, the discrete case. Okay, so for the discrete case, and this is just for, for binary uh, valued factors, um, this number of parameters scales really uh, rapidly. So we want to do something about it. Um, so we're going to make an assumption, a modeling assumption. Uh, we're actually going to do the following. So we're going to um, take on what we call the, the naive base assumption, meaning that all the feature values are treated as independent when conditioned on the class CK. And what I mean with that is the following. So I have my class conditional probabilities and I'm going to say that given these uh, the given class, these probabilities factorize. They're independent, meaning that I take the product of all these individual 
um, conditional probabilities for each of these components within the vector. Okay, th so that, that's given over here. So when x, the component within x, so the feature values are independent, I can make this factorization, right? And now in this particular case, this is the probability that xi uh, takes on either the value 0 or the value 1 given my class. So it's a binary random variable. So we can model this with a Bernoulli distribution. Okay, so let's model this with a Bernoulli distribution. Then we still have this product, all the components. Now the probability ki to the power xi, I'm going to explain it in a minute. 1 minus pi ki 1 minus xi. Okay, what does this expression say? So we're trying to, we're modeling the distribution with these pi um, in this index with, with ki, where uh, i is really the component in my vector and k is the class. So pi ki means the probability that xi takes on the value 1 given uh, my class ck. So you see how this uh, Bernoulli distribution works, right? So this, this is a binary random variable, so we can use it as sort of selection uh, method. So if xi is 1, I'm going to select this probability. This was the probability that um, xi takes on the value 1. So that's how I model it. Um, and what is then the probability uh, for xi is 0? Well, then I select 1 minus this probability. Okay, that's how the uh, Bernoulli distribution works. Um, so, so what we do in this naive base assumption, we assumed uh, that uh, the feature values are independent. So that leads to this factorization. Uh, the feature values, each feature value in itself is a binary um, random variable. So that means we're going to work with the Bernoulli distribution and we get this product of all these uh, terms over here. And this Bernoulli distribution, each Bernoulli distribution is only parameterized with one parameter, right? And this parameter represents the probability that that particular feature value takes on the value one, given that class. So now we see that with this assumption, the number of parameters per class is given by d. So that's much more friendly than this 2 to the power d, a number of parameters in the most general case. Okay, nice. So now we have a tractable approach for uh, modeling my uh, class conditional distributions. And we're going to do that uh, via this uh, Bernoulli uh, distributions. And this also means now once we have this parameterization, we, we can turn this into a classification uh, method, right? Where we want to look at the posterior class probabilities given my input. And it still has the same form. So we can use a softmax in the multi-class uh, case where each AK is given by the logarithm of this uh, class conditional uh, distribution times the prior uh, for that particular class. So let me write it out, uh, this logarithm split. So we have the logarithm of the class conditional plus the logarithm of the prior. And now because we work with this product of Bernoulli distributions, this logarithm of all these products uh, becomes actually the sum over all my components of xi times the logarithm of pi, pi ki plus 1 minus xi, the logarithm of 1 minus pi ki plus the logarithm of the prior, which I haven't said much about, but um, modeling the prior uh, follows the same procedure as we saw in, in the continuous uh, case actually. Okay, see what I've done here? I took the logarithm of this thing over here. So these powers, they, they move up front. So that's why I see xi times the logarithm of pi uh, uh, ki. So these, these pi, so these probabilities uh, for each random variable uh, taking on the value one, that is what we're going to model, right? And now we can do this again via a maximum likelihood approach. Okay, so these uh, pi k of i's are the parameters that we want to, that basically determine my predictive distribution in the end. And these can be obtained via a maximum likelihood approach, similar to um, well what we've done so far in the regression case and the continuous classification case. But now we can also do this in this discrete setting. 
Now I'm not going to repeat this exercise for this particular case. That is actually up to you. Uh, we have a couple of exercises. I think it's even in the assignment uh, for uh, this week that you um, find these uh, probabilities that parameterize the Bernoulli, Bernoulli distributions uh, yourself. Okay, and by now you should all know the recipe for uh, the maximum likelihood solution. Step one, define the likelihood. Step two, take the logarithm of the likelihood. Um, step three, compute the derivative with respect to the variable that you're trying to find and set it to zero and solve that particular equation. And that will give you the, the maximum likelihood solution for that parameter.